Hi everyone, and welcome to KFAX Audio Drama Dojo. I'm your host, Sensei Rob. Or, you know, just Rob, as I often tell my students to call me at work. This is a series of mid-month little extras for you listeners where I talk about the shows, the actors, audio drama, or whatever comes to mind. At first I was opposed to doing commentary tracks. Well, before the end of the project. After all, I did do a Team Iron Angel commentary track, but I did that as more producer's notes at the end. But since Twin Stars is going to be a rather long project, I thought I'd stick a few of these notes on during the show rather than wait until the end. We'll see how it turns out. So, let's get started. So, Twin Stars, where did it come from? Well, I have to tell you a story. So once when I was, what, I would have been probably about 19, somewhere around that area anyway, 18, 19, somewhere like that. Um, a little game came out from uh, LucasArts called TIE Fighter. It was a flight simulator where you became an Imperial pilot and you piloted a TIE Fighter for the Empire. It was a PC game. It was a, probably one of the best games of the year and probably one of the best games I've ever played. I lost track of how many hours I logged on that thing. But um, the key point is that in TIE Fighter, it came with a little booklet which was the story of an Imperial pilot. You know, fairly average written piece of game fiction, nothing too special. But reading it, I suddenly started to think, you know, you know what would be really cool is if um, they'd written almost the same type of book for the X-Wing game, which had come out previous, which I don't believe they did. And if we had this juxtaposition of these two pilots rising up and going through the ranks slowly developing perhaps they started at the same point and then they go out from there and the two of them end up becoming rivals and uh, facing off against each other and at least that's what I got out of the booklet of course it was just you know a fairly typical story but um, I thought that would be really cool that's what the book inspired me to think of but and I'd never really seen exactly a space opera or a science fiction story like that. Not exactly at the time. Later on, I'd see one called Legend of the Galactic Heroes, which is an absolutely astounding um, space opera. It's from a Japanese series of novels, and it uh, has an animated version, which is 114 episodes plus several movies and several videos long. Um, Galactic Heroes is not something you take lightly, but it is one of the most amazing things you will ever watch. Like, after watching Galactic Heroes, you know, watching American stuff with, like, two and three and four ships engaging in starship combat just didn't really seem that special anymore when, you know, Galactic Heroes has fleets of 10, 20, 30,000 ships fighting each other at the same time. And uh, the tactics and other things that go along with it. Galactic Heroes is just an astounding series. But I'm, you know, getting all geeky and talking about the ships when I should really be talking about the characters. Because one of the things about Galactic Heroes is it's about two people from opposite sides of uh, two warring space empires. And um, how each of them goes up to the ranks to a degree. They start well into the ranks as they are. Following them and their respective casts and seeing where the story goes. And um, I would say that in that sense, Galactic Heroes is probably the biggest influence on Twin Stars. Twin Stars is me trying to take the concept of Galactic Heroes in a lot of ways, but taking it in a different direction, combining it with some more traditional American Star Wars, Star Trek type elements, and just bringing all these different sci-fi, space opera ideas together and seeing what I can do with them. Yeah, I want to see how one could do it to have, instead of having a hero and a villain, to have two heroes. I mean, I saw Galactic Heroes did it. I want to do it a little bit differently. If you see Galactic Heroes, you, you know, you'll realize that I'm not ripping Galactic Heroes off at all. Twin Stars is actually very different than Galactic Heroes is. There are some, actually no, there's not really that many similarities at all. Are than the basic concept of uh, having two heroes instead of a hero and a villain, but they're just from two different sides. They're two different points of view. Ping An and Tyson are both equally valid points of view. And I know during book one, 
for a part of it anyway, Ping An will seem very much like the villain. But eventually, as things go, you'll see that she's not really a villain. She really is actually a hero in her own way. But at the same time, Tyson, who will often seem like he's the hero, is not always quite the hero you might think he is. Um, but we'll get to that eventually, too, as the story goes on. Well, the other biggest influence on twin stars that exists is Horatio Hornblower. I confess, I am a huge Hornblower fan. I love the Horatio Hornblower novels. They are something that I think everyone should read and are some of the best literature you know, produced by mankind. I really do. Oh, I can't tell you how much I admire the Hornblower books. How much I love them, Hornblower, Bush, Lady Barbara. Oh, just to me, that's like romance and action and adv adventure. And one of the things that I'm trying to do also, you'll see, is there's a lot of Hornblower style adventure going on in these stories. In a very real sense, this story is uh, going to be almost a Napoleonic story set in space, which I know is not entirely original. I know that... Uh, David Weber's been writing his Honor Harrington books for years, which are that sort of thing. But they do focus a little more on the military aspect. And um, I've also heard there's an audio drama kicking around out there called The Arbiter Chronicles, which I believe also goes into this area and I really, really should listen to sometime. Not quite sure why I haven't, but um, oh well, I'll get around to it sooner or later. But... One thing that I've noticed is that most sci-fi, when they get into this, they're all about the military. Like, they're all about the guns and the weapons and the tactics and all that stuff. And yeah, I'm going in for that too. But something they tend to forget is that Hornblower was, first and foremost, a story about adventure of the original Hornblower trilogy. The third book, Flying Colors, is a story almost entirely set on land. And it's about Hornblower dealing with the French government and uh, his great escape and other things related to that. There are really no major sea battles in that story. Yet it's a fantastic adventure because it's about the people. And that's one thing that I think will differentiate Twin Stars probably from a lot of space opera that you'll read is the Twin Stars, first and foremost, is always about the people. It's always about the characters. The ships, the guns, the whiz-bang tech, everything else, to me, plays a second role to the characters. The characters will be affected by, you know, the tech and everything else, but in the end, it's not that important, because after all, stories are about people. And I think if you don't make them about people, they get really boring really fast. So... Anyway, so that's my approach, is more, uh, we'll call it human-centered sci-fi. I'll get more into that later, I suppose, probably in a future broadcast. So, um, let's see, why did I write it? Well, really, I wrote Twin Stars, as I said, because I didn't see anything out there exactly like this. I mean, when I got into audio drama, I saw the unlimited potential of audio drama. Like, really, I could do this epic science fiction series or epic fantasy series or whatever I wanted and I didn't have to worry about the cost of sets, I didn't have to worry about actors, I didn't have to worry about special effects or the fact that, you know, it'll look like crap in 10 years compared to what people are watching at that point and they'll want to take out the effects and replace them and all other sorts of stupid crap. No, no. Audio drama is a very pure form. It's a very pure form from the creator to the audience. Not quite as pure, of course, as, say, an audiobook, which is literally often the director reading to the audience. There is an intermediary there. There are, should say, I should say there are intermediaries there because I'm talking about the actors. And so it's not quite pure, but often the actors, in a lot of ways, I find tend to enhance what the author had in mind. I mean, God knows my actors have uh, definitely brought out some things in my character so far that I didn't see coming, but which absolutely fit. Like some of their interpretations of the characters have been beyond what I actually even imagined. So, yeah, I really do view this as a collective thing. It's a group process. It's a team effort. 
and um, I'm very, very lucky to have these actors. But again, I'll talk more about them in future podcasts as well. Yes, there, there we go. The simple answer is that there wasn't anything quite out there like this, and um, so seeing an opportunity, I took it. And as I think we're on the verge of a kind of renaissance for audio drama on the internet, I hope that um, I can be a bit of a forerunner that way. So I guess the next question that I should answer is where is it going? After all, this is the start. You know, where's the end? Where's all this going? Well, there's eight episodes to book one, and then if it's popular, I'll move on to book two with a theoretical plan for five books, so 40 episodes in total. Give or take. I'm not opposed to actually making books longer. Probably not shorter. All things considered, this project will get longer and longer on me. Um, I'm doing it in stages because, you know, life always doesn't go as planned and my life is kind of in a changing phase, shall we say. Transitory phase. Yes, that's the correct term. Transitory phase. And, um, so I want some leeway when they're released and I want to be able to play with the schedule a little bit. But not just, you know, stop halfway through on people. So I'll try to make each book self-contained, but the whole story itself will probably take about 40 episodes. So it'll probably take, yeah, about five books to tell. Maybe six, maybe four. We'll see how it goes. Um, I have obvious plans where all this is going. I'm not going to tell you what they are, but I know pretty well where this is going. And I think I know how long it's going to take to tell, but um, uh, the best laid plans of mice and men, eh? <laughs> what I can tell you is that there's going to be lots of twists and turns. There's going to be lots of characters you're going to love, characters you're going to hate, I hope. Um, if you don't hate them, I'm not doing my job. And that there'll be lots of adventure and uh, maybe a little bit of romance, too. Although I can tell you that book one is not focused on romance. That will mostly come later. Book one's too busy setting the stage for the whole thing. So, if you enjoy them, if you enjoyed what you've heard with book one, want to hear more, come check out Kung Fu Action Theater at the beginning of each month. I try to release a new episode of Twin Stars at the first of every month. Um, you can also subscribe to our podcast feed, delivered right to your iPod. Why not? Simple. Direct. Um, or MP3 player, sorry, I shouldn't be uh, an Apple snob or anything like that, and especially considering I'm not an Apple snob, I don't even use a Mac or an Apple. I'm too poor. <sighs> Send money. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh yeah, so, if you have any questions, feel free to write to me, and I'll try to answer them on future Audio Drama Dojo segments. I'm going to try to do one of these each month. Uh, I might miss a month here and there, depending on my schedule. But, you know, I'll try to throw these in and uh, talk a bit about the shows and the people and uh, producing audio drama and whatever else comes to mind. And uh, so, yeah, write to me. Let me know if you enjoy these. Let me know about our shows. Let me know um, what I can talk to you about. Oh, yes, there is something I do have to ask. I have to ask a favor of all of you. While I don't ask for payment of any kind from my listeners, I do need something. And what that something is, is, well, more listeners. You know, I want our family and our uh, our family, I want our community to just grow. And with that in mind, I was hoping I could convince all of you out there to tell a friend family member, distant relative, cousin you never talked to, you know, internet person you've only talked to once, whoever, tell them about our shows. You know, if you enjoy these shows, please let other people know. Because, well, yeah, I want our community to grow. You know, I want other people to have the opportunity. I mean, I'm not doing these for profit. I'm mostly just doing these for fun. But eh, the truth is, you know, there's a little bit of ego here. And I do actually enjoy watching my numbers go up. And um, as my numbers go up, the community grows and more other cool people just like you will get involved. And you can all come down to the Kung Fu Action Theater forums and hang out with the actors and, and each other and talk. And, um, yeah, we can just grow our community. How's that sound? Sound like a good offer? And speaking of communities, 
I have a few promos for some other fine shows you might think about checking out between now and May 1st. What's May 1st? Of course, when the next episode of Twin Stars comes out. So um, I'm going to leave you with these promos because, after all, audio drama is a wonderful form and you should be checking out as many of these shows as you possibly can. You should be heading on to Icebox Radio Theater, Dakota Ring Theater, Crazy Dog Theater. Why did it always end in theater? I don't know. Uh, uh, Pendant Productions? There we go. There's something that's not theater. You should be checking them all out because it's really, uh, it's a really new and budding art form. And, uh, I'm, uh, really honored to be part of it. I'm really happy and honored to be part of it. And, um, if you want to check out more about this art form, go to the Audio Drama Talk forums, audiodramatalk.com. Check it out. Trust me. There's just lists and lists of other groups that are doing the same kind of thing I am. And there's some great stuff out there. Some of which I'm about to advertise for right now. So Zajen, bye bye, and I will talk to you later. See you next month. What do you want to hear? Sci-fi? I have slowed the time stream for you, but I can only do so for a moment. How about adventure? Listen, you got to turn around. You haven't got enough fuel. You're not going to make it. Horror. Put back the slab and get out of this. What? You can. Quick. It's your only chance. Or stuff that defies description. But what are the words hiding beneath the shadow? shadow? Now I can see the gate. 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 It all fell fell, 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 fell. Here's stories like this and more on the show dedicated to modern audio theater, Radio Drama Revival, with me, Fred. www.radiodramarevival.com. New episodes up every Friday. Hear top producers talk about their craft, learn about modern techniques being applied to this almost forgotten art form, and most of all, tune in for the stories. That's Radio Drama Revival. RadioDramaRevival.com or search for us on iTunes. There are many realities in the cosmos. An uneasy truth stands between the most powerful. Yet war is looming. In a remote reality cluster lurks a far bigger danger. A dark and terrible secret. Cosmas Productions presents Estelvin's Legacy. Visit Cosmas Productions at cosmas.co.uk. The universe exists for now. I'm Jack Ward. And I'm Shannon Hilchey. Please join us in the Sonic Society as we delve into the very best new audio cinema the world has to offer. Each week we showcase a new audio drama that you may not have heard of, made by a growing group of new radio play enthusiasts. We also offer interviews tips on audio works, and a continuing serial. So if you love full cast stories, and who doesn't, please join us each week at the Sonic Society. You can find us at sonicsociety.org or at any of the major directories like the podcast Pickle or iTunes. Join us, won't you? And when you come, bring a friend.